initial interest in offering a custom shop is to bring the overall quality of the instrument up. We've had great experience and we're bringing all of that together to refine the process of building Guild Guitars today for tomorrow. Everything would exceed anyone's expectation. There is nothing being reserved to build the guitars that we're offering today. Basically, with a Guild brand, we've got a lot of history, a lot of heritage, a lot of great design, but that doesn't mean that everything that could have been done did get done. So for us, it's an opportunity to celebrate some of the great historical Guild models, but also to take it in another direction, which still holds true to the heritage, but allows us to do some different stuff. Working with custom guitars, I mean, it, this is something we've got a lot of experience with. We've done it, but not at such a grand scale as what we intend to do with, with Gil. A lot of us that are builders, myself included, that's what we really want to do. You know, we want to make custom stuff. It's cool. And then when it's done, I mean, you, like this, this X500 here, I mean, I worked on this to get it ready for an AM show, and now you got this beautiful piece of art here. So from the very, very beginning, guitars like this were what Guild really thrived on. And archtop instruments are not easy things to build. Going forward, they had a tradition of well-crafted instruments, acoustics and electrics. Many companies only specialized in one or the other. Guild, from the very beginning, made acoustic guitars and electric guitars in relatively small quantities. But for many, many, many years, Guilds have had a reputation of being well-built, great musical instruments. I mean, we all grew up with Guild. It just deserves to have a custom shop. One of the things that Ren and I do when we come up here is give people alternate ways to do things, things that we've done based on our experience. So when I worked today with Doug in terms of shaping necks up in the neck department, we were essentially saying, okay, here's a bunch of different ways, depending on what tools you've got, depending on what light you've got, a bunch of different ways that you can get this thing carved to a final spec. This is what I looked for when I did it. We have an opportunity to make the best sounding guitar that we ever can. And I need everybody at each level to understand what their level could be in that participation of choosing and grading the right material. So we spent some time with uh, Deb down in the crib looking at materials and, and listening to them. There's a difference between the sound that a good top makes or a good back makes than one that, that doesn't sound good. And that's what we're trying to teach. Tap tuning a top is listening to the change in frequency when the wood is suspended and wrapped with your finger or a, a stylus of some, of some kind. And you're really looking for the change as you work on a top. The key to wood selection starts out by knowing the people who are, who are cutting the wood. So there has to be an understanding of our needs, an understanding on our side of how the wood is processed all the way to us. Once we get the wood here, there are other things we have to do. Taking care of the wood can be two or three years if it's rosewood and ebony. More porous woods like spruce dry a lot quicker. But even the spruce, we can't possibly use it for about 90 days after we get it. We prefer to let it sit about six months. There's a, a reason that Adirondack spruce is used. The wood that was grown east of the Mississippi and up in this region here and north into Canada, uh, referred to as red spruce or Adirondack spruce, is a tougher spruce laterally than anything else that was grown in the region. It's got a great sound. It's a very, very stiff, stable material. And to be able to use it on these guilds means that we can tap into a historic connection that's really very important. A guitar sounds like wood and it sounds warm and dry and uh, the resonant quality 
and the strength is, is, is right at the very top of the, the pile. The vision of the, behind Orpheum was, had Guild existed, had it started 30 years earlier, or 20 years earlier, what would it have been like? Well, the America of 1933, in terms of both music and economics, is a completely different story than America in 1953. That is the romantic period and the valuable period of collectible guitars. Those instruments were made from the late 20s through the, the early 40s. We tried to give them a, a feel and a look of something that you would expect to have seen if it had existed. We changed the headstock shape, we changed the logo, so we made them subtly elegant rather than flashy and gaudy. It's different levels of trim, there's not a lot of abalone on it, because abalone was very expensive in the 30s and wood was relatively cheap, so all the decoration on these instruments is wood. Well, we've ended up with a bunch of instruments that perform very, very well, and which harken back to an earlier era than Guild Start. There's tremendous human involvement in guitars when they're built at this level. We're using machines where machines matter, and we're using people where people can make a difference. So through all these processes, there are some things that you can only do with people. The CNC work is, is done on the necks, but we do the final neck carving by hand and fret by hand. To, you know, I think a lot of people would be surprised how much hand work we actually still do in a factory like this. The bending, particularly on these instruments here we're looking at, you know, I use a bending iron to bend them, then uh, gluing it up in a press. I think you want to have your best people on every step of this. We've got a great group of guys that do the finish work and then buffing, sanding, polishing, attention to detail. Neck fitting, you know, the body assembly. The finish process on an instrument like this, it's got all these hills and curves and stuff like that. It has to be sprayed by people. You've got to scrape this with people. You've got to buff it with people. And all these various steps of the process where only people can do it. We have a working group of people that have been charged with teaching what we can to the next generation of luthiers. I think we have an attention to detail that most American manufacturers of guitars did not have 50 years ago or 60 years ago. We have access to good materials, we have access to better technology, so some of those things which need to be accurate now can be much more accurate. So I think these are basically the best guilds that have ever existed. The most important thing when shopping for a musical instrument is that you buy one that will challenge you to play more. The more you play, the better you get, the more you realize the need for another type of instrument, another voice. You know, this guitar does everything I expected it to do, except now I expect more. I need another guitar. We have a saying in the industry about how many instruments one person can own. And we always say, just one more. <laughs>